It's official, Fontaine is finally the next destination in Genshin Impact, and these are the top 5 new features coming with the 4.0 update. So I'm sure a lot of you are anxious about the whole water exploration mechanic, and honestly, it looks pretty decent. First of all, you can use any character to swim around, not just the traveler, and there is no annoying oxygen bar to worry about, so you can take your sweet time exploring the depths, although there is a stamina bar for sprinting, but you won't die or anything if it runs out, and there's even these currents that you can swim to and increase the speed. But when it comes to the actual Fontaine region, it looks amazing. The devs were clear that you will barely see any empty spaces when going underwater, there is chock full of stuff to explore, many different and cute water creatures living here, and and some you can even utilize for various things, like gaining a shield. And also, there's tons of different areas to explore on the ground, so you won't be just swimming underwater all the time. And when it comes to new enemies, we saw some cool designs of these clockwork mecha, but there's also two new bosses that got introduced. The first one is called Icewind Suite, and this boss fight is going to be really unique because you'll need to adapt to different mechanics that you're not used to seeing. And the other boss is going to be this big Mr. Crab with a volcano on its back, called the Emperor of Fire and Iron. However, probably the biggest change we're going to see in the game is going to be this system called Arcade. I'm not sure I pronounced it correctly, but vision users from Fontaine have this unique attribute, and the RK is made up of two opposing energies, Osea and Pneumia. I don't know, if they sound weird, we'll need to see how the English VAs pronounce it. But basically, characters from Fontaine will yield this power, and you will be able to use it against enemies of Fontaine or other various objects. For example, this clockwork mecha who holds a shield can be removed from it if you use one of the Fontaine characters. Or in another example, if Osea and Pneumia energies are aligned, the Annihilation reaction is triggered and it generates energy. As far as I understand, it's not as intricate as the elemental system, but it will be the unique aspect of any Fontaine character that you pull for. Like, to me, all of this sounds super abstract as of now, and we'll need to see how these mechanics work when the update is live. Now, finally, in order to reach Fontaine, you will be able to either take a boat from Sumir, or if you have completed the Archon quest in Mondstadt, you will then be able to quickly teleport to Fontaine instead. I guess Hoyo finally realized a lot of new players have a massive backlog of quests before they can reach a new region, so it's really nice to see there's some help to fast forward this process. Oh, and on a final note, the Archon's quest will persist from 4.0 to 4.2, which is great to hear this, because the Archon quests of each nation are really exciting when you're playing through without filler content in between. With the new 4.0 version, we're getting a bunch of events. Now, the major event that will be happening is going to be called Mega Mecha Melee, which consists of a few activities, including some underwater time challenges, a combat game mode, and a rhythm minigame called Dance Dance Resolution. And your reward for completing these minigames is going to be the good old Benny Boy, along with tons of materials shown here. The next event, called Relic Records, will require you to collect different types of mats and defeat the monsters in the Fontaine region. To me, this looks like an introductory event to help us get better acquainted with the new region. Then there's also going to be a photo event, pretty simple, take some photos of Fontaine region, learn more about its locations, and get some rewards. Now there's also a dedicated combat event called Verdict of Blades. It seems like it will be using few unique mechanics to make the combat feel a bit more different, so that's kinda nice. And then finally here, we can see all the events condensed into one place, and from the looks of it, there's also going to be a Leyland Overflow event sometime later. However, in my opinion, the biggest surprise here is the free Lynette that everyone will be able to obtain as long as they have reached Adventure Rank 25. And that's not all, there's more love coming from from Hoyer for the beginner players, and you'll also get enough materials to get Lynette to first ascension. So we finally got to take a closer look at the 4.0 characters, and starting with Linny, he's a 5-star Pyro Bow user, and it seems like he will have a similar playstyle to Ganyu. His charge shot has two levels. The first charging level is just a regular charge shot, while the second one can become a prop arrow, and after unleashing it, it will deal increased damage and summon a Grimalkin hat, but I prefer calling it a cat in a hat. This little buddy of his will taunt the enemies and have some health, but when it expires or gets destroyed, it will deal pyro damage to enemies. Finally, his burst turns him into THE cat in the hat, you can move around with him, damage the enemies, and then afterwards, explode to deal damage once more and create a new cat in the hat. So it looks like his burst feels very similar to Fischl's, and I feel like his entire kit is a mix between Ganyu and Fischl. Now, the other one of the two performers is Lynette. At first, I honestly thought she is going to be a dedicated support to Linny, but it seems like she is more of a support that you can use with many characters. Basically, her skill has a similar feel to Yolan's. You can either tap it to deal damage, or hold down the button and enter this shadowy state where she runs around and has an ability to mark an enemy, and then afterwards, when the skill ends, she deals damage to the marked enemy. I'm not sure how useful it's going to be in combat besides applying Animo, but having more characters who have an increased run speed is great because Genshin's exploration is getting bigger by almost every update. And as for her burst, it's really cute. Just like Linny, she summons a cat in the hat and it will periodically deal Animo damage in an AoE. In addition, this burst has elemental absorption, and what's cool about it is that the element it absorbs, it will shoot out the same element attacks to enemies. This will be really interesting to see if it applies enough of the elemental gauge so that some of the characters who utilize vapor 
or melt can perform it more consistently. Also, I'm not sure if Lynette has an ability to group the enemies like other animal characters, but maybe this will be possible with constellations. And then finally, we have the last sibling, Fremenet. He is a 4-star Cryo Claymore user who has a cute penguin purse that helps him in combat. By activating his skill called Purse Timer, his normal attacks will increase purse pressure level and unleash waves of frost damage and other varying attacks that will combo on top of each other. These attacks will vary on the pressure level, and honestly, he seems way too interesting for a 4-star, so here's hoping we can have some fun with his playstyle. Also, if you use him in your party, he will reduce the underwater sprinting stamina bar by 35%, so right now, he's the most OP character when it comes to underwater swimming. But let's not forget that we also got a sneak peek at the banners, and the first phase will have Linny and Yalan with Lynette, while the second phase will have Zhongli and Child as well as Fremenet. By the way, the second phase banner is a nice nostalgic callback to 1.1 if anyone remembers. Oh, and yeah, the 5-star bow for Linny will also be featured. If it's a new major update, you know we're getting some new equipment. And in this case, we're gonna be able to farm two new artifact sets. However, Hoyo seems to be playing sneaky here, and I cannot talk about these artifacts officially because nothing has been revealed about them. But on the brighter side, we're getting five new craftable weapons and five new battle pass weapons as well. What's cool about the battle pass is that these new weapons will be added alongside the existing ones. So if you're still not done refining some of them, you can still take your time or start collecting new ones. Also, for those of you who power through the fishing quest to obtain the the catch, a new 4-star sword will be available if you're ready to go on another fisherman's face. A couple of few more things I want to mention come from the developer's discussion. First of all, 8 of these artifact sets are going into the strong box, and I cannot tell you how happy I am to see Emblem and Tenacity in here, because as much as I love the Shimanava set, I was mostly in that domain trying to obtain godlike emblem pieces. And I don't even have to tell you how salty I would feel after trying to farm the Tenacity set and all I'm getting are Pale Flame HP drops. Also, we will be able to destroy 4-star artifacts more quickly with the new button added, although I'm not sure who's crazy enough to waste the precious artifact experience here, but more power to you, I guess. And for those 5 people who are still playing Genshin TCG, you'll now be able to observe duels, which in all honesty, it's a cool feature to have. Then, there's a really cool party system update. Not only will characters enter with unique animations and stand in awesome poses, but the party screen will also have different backgrounds. And finally, I'm not sure about you, but this is one of the top anticipated quality of life changes that I needed. We're actually getting a multi-layered map. Part of the reason why I stopped exploring Sumeru's desert regions is because it just became too overwhelming to navigate the areas without a proper map system. So now that we have this, I might just actually go back and see what's hiding in the desert. All in all, we're getting a new region of Fontaine that features underwater mechanics, a bunch of events that give out free rewards including the new 4-star Lynette, while when it comes to the banners, Phase 1 will have Linny and Yelan with Lynette, and Phase 2 will feature Zhongli with Child and Fremenet. Finally, two new artifact sets, five new craftable and battle pass weapons are also coming with the new update. Oh, and yeah, there's also the new fishing sword. But yeah, that's basically 4.0 in a nutshell. Hopefully you found this video useful, and if you did, I would really appreciate it if you could press the like button and subscribe to my channel because I will be making tons of Fontaine videos. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you next time.